there are people in this country that think wealth is uh, evil. I think that's one of the reasons that God asked me to write this book. I, I think there's a problem out there with some bad and toxic teaching that somehow that if you've won with money, if you've, if you've built a level of wealth, if you've become successful, that biblically you've done something wrong. Uh, and that's actually a, a form of heresy called Gnosticism. And we need to understand that God owns it all. We're just managers for him. We're just stewards. And so what does he call us then to do with his wealth as we manage it for him? Financial blessings are the only blessings we apologize for. And uh, that, that's ridiculous. We don't apologize when God blesses us with health or he blesses us with a, a lifelong wonderful mate or wonderful children. Uh, we, but if he blesses us with wealth or financial success, we're supposed to apologize for that according to the culture. This is about when you do things biblically with money, you will end up with the responsibility to manage money for the kingdom. I'm not a fan of the inheritance tax. I've already been taxed on this money once and now they're <laughs> going to take half of it again when it comes back. It's a, it's a really unfair tax. We work with a lot of family businesses and a lot of farmers who are devastated by the inheritance tax and what it does to people. So you're right. I'm, I'm not a fan of that from a political standpoint. But that does kind of come back to the overall discussion of, well, who does God call to manage this money? Does he call the government to manage our wealth or does he call individuals who are walking with him, handling money his ways to manage his wealth for him, for the glory of his kingdom? Dave, I must say it's, it's biblically sound all the way through. I, there, there's a bunch of heresy going around. Talk about some of those heresies. Those people are teaching heresy and this is solid what you've got here in this book. I, I really commend it. The biggest one I get from uh, folks, you know, based on their political agenda, not really their biblical knowledge, is that if a camel can't get through the eye of a needle, then the rich man can't get into heaven. And, and if that's the case, then Jesus' blood that was spilled at Calvary isn't powerful enough to get a rich man into heaven. I think that's called heresy. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it is. Look it up. <laughs> and so when you start putting limits on the power of the cross and limits on the power of the grace uh, that, it, that is extended to us from the Father through the Son, uh, based on someone's wealth, then that's Gnosticism. That's the worship of uh, spirit versus materialism versus the worship orthodoxy from an orthodoxy standpoint of actually what happened at the cross. And so what that means is someone just doesn't understand the Bible. They're not mean. They just don't understand. We've got a lot of biblical illiteracy out there and people haven't walked through and taught because the Bible's not inconsistent. It says mm -hmm. the diligent prosper. And that's, that means that if you're diligent, if you work hard and you save your money, you're going to have some money. That's a simple thing. Mm -hmm. And you haven't done something wrong and that doesn't preempt you from heaven. And to say that is heresy.